He is one of the greatest to ever play the game. Former PBA Player of the Year, Chris Barnes. The last season was not kind to the future Hall of Famer. Barnes only made two televised finals, one of which was the USBC Masters. But a mistake cost Barnes yeah, dearly. Baby. Allowing Mike Fagan to take home the first major championship of his career. Today, those two meet again in the semifinal match at the 2012 World Bowling Tour Finals. Will Barnes get his revenge and the chance to face defending WBT champion Mika Koivu Niemi in the title match? Plus, Tournament of Champions winner Kelly Kulik returns, along with Liz Johnson and Missy Parkin in the women's WBT Finals. Two World Bowling Tour titles on the line here in Las Vegas as the 2012 World Series of Bowling kicks off next. Bowling is back. Welcome to South Point Casino and Hotel in Las Vegas and the fourth annual Geico World Series of Bowling. This is the Bear World Bowling Tour Finals. I'm Lon McCarran with Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. Some of the biggest names of the game are in action today. To introduce them, let's get it down to public address announcer Mike J. The number three qualifier is a 14-time champion on the PBA Tour, triple crown winner, former player of the triple year, crown. and 10-time member of Team USA from Double Oak, Texas, Chris Barnes. The number two player is a four-time PBA Tour champion, two-time member of Team USA from Dallas, Texas, the Argyle assassin, Mike Fagan. The top qualifier is a nine-time PBA Tour champion, including three majors, two-time PBA Player of the Year, the defending World Bowling Tour champion from Heartland, Michigan, representing Finland, Major Mika Koivuniemi. The World Bowling Tour brings its finals to Las Vegas after an exhaustive international trek that would make any seasoned traveler cringe. Randy, the continued success of the WBT really points towards the international popularity of the game. Well, professional bowling is now truly global, and the finalists on today's telecast had an opportunity to compete in 20 events over two years spanning the globe. Our players competed in such exotic destinations as Kuwait, Japan, Australia, and France, just to name a few. Professional bowling is now truly international, but hey, Lon, don't take my word for it. Why don't you ask the defending champion of this event, Mika Koivuniemi. He's from Finland, and you'll see him in the finals. Match number one features the third seed, Chris Barnes, 42 years old from Double Oak, Texas, and the second seed, Mike Fagan. Fagan, as you heard, the uh, Argyle assassin opening on the left lane. And Fagan leaves the 10 to open up. What a breakout season it was for Mike Fagan last season, winning a major. The USBC Masters is right up there for the most of the season for player of the year considerations. He's become a very versatile, well-rounded player, can play straight, can hook it, can do a lot of things except foul. And this will not be his 15th perfect game. Nice lane maintenance. Unbelievable. Wow. Watch this, he's gonna stick. And jump. And there's the foul, the shoe going over the foul line. And that's gonna be an open frame to start for Mike Fagan. Now, what a tough spot to open up for Fagan, who now watches Chris Barnes in his 15th PBA season, 14 titles, three majors. And he gets the seven pin to fall for an opening strike. Well, we mentioned at the top of the show that last season was a disappointment for Chris Barnes, maybe the worst ever. Last season was a disaster for a lot of reasons. One, it was the least amount of money I've made since my rookie season. Uh, I had a couple of major goals in mind. Uh, I, did, I, did accomplish, I did have 300 on TV, which was the lone bright spot in the entire season, was that one game. 
Uh, I didn't win the Masters, although I made a good run at it. So that just made it a little bit bigger disappointment. And, uh, you know, the rest of it was, it's the lowest I finished in the points and as long as I can remember. And uh, it just wasn't a very good year. I didn't didn't make the adjustments to what was going on with the, the oils and the, and the patterns we were on. And uh, it was a pretty big disappointment from that standpoint, for sure. Barnes, 25 career second place finishes and certainly will be fighting to avoid his 26th. Rookie of the year in 98, player of the year in the 07-08 no, no. season. He says, yes. get going, and it did. He opens with a double. All 16 pounds was needed to knock all 10 down on this little light mixer. Hear him say, go, go. He wants the ball to go through the pins correctly, and he takes full advantage of the open frame by Mike Fagan. Fagan sticking and having to hop over the foul line for a foul on his spare attempt in the first frame and now finds himself down. He's good there. And there it is. Fagan comes back. These two have a history together. Let's look back to early 2012 in the USBC Masters. Fagan won his first major championship there, yeah. coming back from 30 pins down to defeat Barnes in the title match. The Masters win was fantastic. It was just something that, you know, you work so hard to get to that point, and you don't even know if it's really ever going to happen. Um, you know, so to take advantage of that moment was huge. And, uh, you know, hopefully it gives me a little bit of confidence moving forward for uh, the other events. It was all part of the master plan of him putting together a very sound physical game and then getting the confidence needed to take the whole package to the next level. So now Fagan trying to overcome the foul in the first frame. It's the lane he fouled on. He's fine the approach there, and he comes up with a double of his own. Boy, and that says a lot mentally about Mike Fagan. He just showed you right there the difference between him now and three or four years ago. Does not look happy, though. He's got something going on. I'm not really sure what it is, but he came back after fouling on the 10-pin spare attempt and threw two great shots to cut the deficit to 11. Barnes working on a double. He dances with that gutter, leaves the 10. Man. A great shot that was. This oil pattern plays similar to Cheetah because of the length. However, it's much flatter across the lane, but that's why you see the players playing the extreme outside part of the lane. Ugly ringing 10. Chris told me he has some catching up to do on the PBA Tour. Has to find a way to adjust the conditions better. International Influx making these fields more talented, and he has to find a way to stay up as he cleans up the spare. So you're wondering how to keep score in bowling. Well, you can do it at home. Randy, you score all the time at home. Hey, when I was a kid growing up, I used to keep score to earn my practice money. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. A strike is worth 10 plus the next two balls. A spare is 10 plus the very next ball. Barnes with the double and a spare. But I was told there would be no math. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> On the left blade. And Barnes with another that strike. One. Yeah, he says that one. He likes it. Well, Mark, Mark Baker's worked extensively over the last couple of years with Chris Barnes to get him to try to be a little bit more versatile. He's such a heavy roller of the bowling ball. And Mark Baker's helped him immensely trying to create a little bit different rotation and thus making him a bit more versatile out here. So now Fagan with a chance to make up for that foul after Barnes spared the third. And Fagan with a strike here in the fourth. Emily Mayer, Mike Fagan's fiance, also a very good bowler in her own right there on the left with Kathy and Ralph, Mike's parents. Emily listens to Mike when he comes home and complains about things that are happening to him in his bowling world, and she's one who can understand. 
Emily is, yeah, she's a really good bowler in her own right. She's uh, kind of not as active anymore, but, um, you know, she still competes in the major events, and she does well. She holds her own. So uh, she understands, you know, when I get frustrated, she understands uh, the ups and downs of bowling. Those two planning on getting married in June of 2013, best of luck to them. Mike Fagan is back and with a 10 pen lead. Now Chris Barnes, PBA Triple Crown winner after he won the World Championships. Turned to bowling when college basketball didn't work out. Yeah, he's just a foot too short for that. Barnes working on a strike in the fourth. We've got a great match here at South Point. I've actually seen Chris Barnes play basketball. He's a really good basketball player. And Chris had the opportunity to go and play a little one-on-one -on -one with, with Chris Paul. And Barnes then found out very quickly why he's not in the NBA. <laughs> Seeing he's using the mass eruption, it's kind of the middle ball in terms of power in his arsenal. Full fingertip grip. He's, he uses an extremely tight thumb hole. Not a lot of grab in this wing because if he grabs it at the bottom, it's not coming off. Looking for the turkey, Chris Barnes. And Barnes gets there. Fagan and Barnes bringing the fans a great match here at the World Bowling Tour Finals from South Point. More of this match when we come back to Las Vegas. The Bear Advanced Aspirin World Bowling Tour Finals presented by the PBA is brought to you by Bear Advanced Aspirin. See how it can work for you at FastReliefChallenge.com. Alka-Seltzer Plus, available in a liquid gel. Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. And by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Back to South Point Hotel, the WBT Men's Finals. Third member of our broadcast team is Kimberly Pressler. Kimberly's here now with an explanation of a special tribute the players are paying to one of their own. Kimberly? Thanks, Lon. As you may have noticed at home, the players are wearing a patch on their jersey with the initials TR. It stands for Tony Reyes. He has recently passed and was a fellow bowler that was loved and admired by many. And this is the player's way of honoring him and his legacy. Reyes, an extremely popular member of the PBA family, will certainly be missed. We'll pay tribute to him a little later in today's show. Fagan now down 10 after Barnes struck in the sixth. Fagan working on a four-bagger. Finished third in last season's Player of the Year race. Belmonte second, Sean Rash won that honor. And Fagan with five in a row. No let up in that guy. Mike Fagan overcoming that foul in the first frame, an open frame. And he has just been all strikes since. And you see Fagan, the number two seed with 342 points. Chris Barnes, the third seed. The winner will face the defending champion, Major Mika, Mika Koivu Niemi, who took on Sean Rash for the championship last year, and Mika came away with the win. Mike Fagan made the show at the Tournament of Champions and finished fourth. He lost to Pete Weber at the U.S. Open. We'll never forget that. Fagan is all strikes here at South Point, and Chris Barnes is wired up with us today. Chris Barnes, how do you keep the momentum going when your opponent stringing strikes coming out of a commercial break? Oh, well, I mean, Mike's got a great bar action. He's got, looks like he's got the whole lane. So uh, 
I mean, the only thing I can do is keep putting pressure on him and keep uh, throwing doubles up in front of him. Thanks for your time. Chris opened with a double, then a spare, then a turkey. Barnes trying to work his way into the championship to meet his best buddy on tour, Mika Koivu Niemi. His tour roommate. Gets them all to to keep pace with Fagan. A great crowd here at South Point. Take a look at this ball reaction, Lon. This is a heavy roll of Chris Barnes. It gets out to the dry boards, and notice how it starts to kind of slow down or almost roll out high flush into the pocket. That's the heavy roll of Chris Barnes. He wants that ball to pick up friction, start making its move into the pocket, and then stop. Trying to match Mike Fagan, strike for strike. Yes. And Barnes keeps pace. Well, he did exactly what he said he was going to do, keeping pace and keeping the pressure on Mike Fagan. Just another great shot by arguably the greatest bowler out on the tour today. I'll tell you what, you, you take a survey by most of the players out here, you ask them who the best player on tour is, a little high percentage of those players are going to say it's Chris Barnes. Now Mike Fagan coming off a career year, the king of swing as a two-time Team USA member. In his 11th PBA season. And Fagan doesn't like that. That's ugly. <sighs> this just looks like a bad shot. He misses it at the bottom. Doesn't catch quite enough of the ball. Gets it a little bit right at target and leaves the 2-4-10. He's going to try to get the bowling ball to the left side of the two pin, throw it over into the 10. As you see, Mike Fagan's arsenal is going with the strongest ball in terms of, of overall aggressiveness. Get it over here, go this way, and cover this split. Can he pick it up? He gave it a shot, but Fagan with his second open frame and suddenly finds himself down 25. Max score for Mike Fagan now, 244. Chris Barnes can shoot 279. He opened in the first and eighth. Did Fagan that foul really thought it was going to get into his head, but then he strung together a whole bunch of strikes, and now in the eighth, he opens up again. It's up to Mike Fagan now to strike out the rest of the way. And he's on his way. Two completely different ball rotations. Barnes much more end over end roll. Mike Fagan's got a little more spin to his release. Right now the roll and the line of Chris Barnes looks to be superior. Mike Fagan working on a spare ball. So Chris Barnes now. Working on five straight strikes. Yes. And his ninth frame brings another one. Chris Barnes really bringing it here tonight. He saw an opening Fagan gave him. And Barnes is crashing through. You see he needs just nine pens to shut out Fagan guarantee himself a spot in the championships. Maybe a little revenge for Chris Barnes and getting back at Mike Fagan for losing the Masters. He needs nine on this ball to advance to the title match. And Barnes gets nine. <laughs> he got some minimum. Needed. And you saw Fagan cringe in the background and Barnes just making sure and he does move through Fagan, advance to the championship match. It'll be Barnes and his buddy, Major Mika, in the championship. Chris Barnes, the championship. Well, Barnes cleans it up and 
He'll be through. Hey, Chris Barnes, uh, great match. Pulled a great game. Uh, good thing you didn't need that solid seven there in the 10th frame, huh? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you leave them in the right spots every once in a while. Uh, uh, a lot better than that stone eight a few years back. Chris Barnes, a smile on his face. And he finishes with a strike. 258 for Barnes, a nice game for the Triple Crown winner. And now Barnes will take on the defending champion, Mika Koivu Nemi, getting ready to try to become a back-to-back -back World Bowling Tour champion. We've got a long stay ahead of us here in Las Vegas. Today's World Bowling Tour Finals, just the first of six shows from the 2012 Geico World Series of Bowling. There you see the schedule. Every Sunday, tune in to see the world's best compete here at South Point. Next week, it's the Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Cheetah Championship featuring Bill O'Neill, Chris Loeschetter, Jeff Roche, and Mike Wolf. Back inside here at South Point Hotel, Casino and Spa, we are ready to go for the men's title match of the World Bowling Tour Finals. Mika Koivu Niemi trying to get his second straight WBT championship. He takes on his good buddy, Chris Barnes. Kimberly Pressler is with them now. Well, Lon, Chris and Mika, they always make a bet before they compete against each other. So Chris, what is on the line this time? Well, we've done the hair, we've done the pants. This time we're gonna go with a jersey that the other one designs, or uh, perhaps we'll have a contest on, uh, on Facebook to, uh, to see who can come up with the best one. That seems like a good one. Now, Mika, You've lost the last few times. Uh, are you ready for some redemption? Yes, I've been waiting for this match for a long time, and I'm ready. And um, after this match, send me some good tips for my Facebook page. I will make a nice, nice jersey for him. All right, there you have it. Here's a look back at the wagers we just heard about. Oh, Mika and right, the 2008 right. US yeah. Open sporting what was supposed to be blonde hair, a dye job gone wrong to turn Mika into a redhead, and then the infamous pants. Mika would end up modeling those in the 2010 Tournament of Champions. We've seen a lot worse on the golf course. Right. It should be fun. There you see Lena Koivunemi, Mika's wife on the left, along with her oldest daughter, Ida. Enjoying the action here, Mika's youngest daughter, Lydia, not here, to uh, whom Chris Barnes and his wife act as godparents. And so here we go, beginning our championship match. Chris Barnes, after a victory over Mike Fagan, will open up the action on the left lane. Oh, and Barnes thought he had it. Chris Barnes wanted to open up fast, put some heat uh, on his buddy. He says he should have known. What should he have known? That his ball reaction was going to be a little bit stronger, that he needed to move before he threw that shot. shot. It's called shot. anticipating transition, staying ahead of the move. So now Mika will try to get off to a quick start 14 years on tour nine PBA tour titles three majors and the defending champ here yeah but his home center is bull circus that sounds like a great place <laughs> dual citizenship now between Finland and the United States and he does put up a strike Now it's time for today's Cold Truth, brought to you by Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold. All the finalists we'll see on today's telecast own major victories. That's a good field. Yeah, and that man right there owns the Triple Crown. That guy over there 
getting up on the lanes right now in the blue shirt. He won the Tournament of Champions a couple years ago. He won a quarter of a million dollars doing it. Three majors each for these finalists. Boy, who Niemi. Oh, wow. That traveled a long way across the lane. Mika got to go with a little loft. That's his trademark shot that he carried with him over to the U.S. from Finland, pulling on the European tour and pulling on dry heads. His loft helps get the ball through the front part of the lane, but that time that ball broke loose, leaving the 3-6. So he lets Barnes off the hook. Mika with the spare there, so. Mika tried to put the hammer down on Chris Barnes early, could not. Barnes saw weakness during pressure situations. He identified it, says, I think I've taken care of it. We saw him bowl very well overseas leading up to these finals. And he had trouble at the World Series of Bowling. But here with a chance, this WBT title against Koivu Nemi. Mm, ten pen. Said the one thing he needs to work on is he needs to work on walking a little bit more left to create more angle through the front part of the lane when he has to get in real deep. Today, that's not an issue as he's playing the extreme outside part of the lane and he leaves that vicious ringing 10, which did not make him overly excited. Randy just mentioned that Barnes has been working on improving his game, but he doesn't do it alone. I've had two big advantages over a lot of players on on tour and, and a lot of the best players have similar backgrounds but one I have an athletic background with a lot of you know in a lot of sports and two I think I've had advan the advantage of having some of the best coaches all the way through uh, you know whether it was Pat Henry and Gordon Vatican or Fred Borden or Rick Benoit and now Mark Baker you know I've always had some of the best eyes and uh, uh, in the game helping me out and trying to help me get better and because of my sporting background I think I was more accepting of trying to figure out how to get better because in every other sport it wouldn't ever make sense for a player to think he's going to get better without a coach one of the things that's helped me out in the last few years is uh you know mark baker i think is the the butch Harmon of, of bowling coaches and uh, he's helping myself and tommy jones and mike fagan and bill o'neill and you know he's helping those guys get over the hump and he's he's helping me stay at the top out here on tour despite all the the influx of youth and and rev rate and two-handers and what have you <laughs> 10 pin again. So he goes four pin in the first frame, ring and 10 second. That didn't work. Follows up with a weak 10. Chris Barnes uses 16 pounds, and when you, when, you, when you have a rev rate like Chris does, and you're throwing 16 pounds and you leave a weak 10, that usually spells trouble, and it may be time for a ball change for Chris Barnes. Barnes was not even sure about that <laughs> spare 100%. Three spares to start this championship match. Koivu Nimi now with the only strike of this match in the first frame on the right lane. Both of these champions with opportunities to really put heat on their opponent, and they've failed to do so. Lost. Mika now leaves the 10. So we see a lot of strikes in game one, the lanes transition, and all of a sudden, neither player can get all 10 down when they hit the pocket. Great look at Mika's tall stature, that long arm swing. The loft comes a lot from the fact that he doesn't use a lot of knee bends, so his Launch is very high off the floor. Mika defending his title here in the World Bowling Tour Men's Finals. He took the inaugural edition of this event last year as the number one seed against eventual player of the year, Sean Rash. Rash made some costly errors, which tipped the match in Mika's favor, 237 to 224. Fitting victory for one of the most well-traveled bowlers on the planet. The bowling is so different, depends which part of the world you are. In Europe, there's a lot of like league bowling, 
not the way here. It's more like you pull on the club and clubs balls against other clubs in the leagues. In Asia, the best players are picked by the federation and they, they train as uh, professionals, basically. They get paid by the government and they train every day. And Middle East is about the same thing. So there's so many different variations of bowling all over the world. But yeah, there's a lot of good bowlers all over the place and all of them like to win. He may have faced some tough competition in his travels, but at the age of 45, Mika is still a force to be reckoned with no matter where he bowls. And here's a look at Mika's arsenal. Again, like we've seen, the player's not going with the most aggressive of ball, but something right in between strongest and less aggressive. Major Mika in the fourth. There's the strike. Anytime Mika's ball hooks too much, he can just throw it a little bit farther down the lane. All right, so now the heat on Chris Barnes. Chris, you've had some carry issues after the first match where it seemed like you couldn't help but strike every ball. Now there's uh, nothing but nines. What adjustment do you make? Well, the first shot was uh, I stayed the same, and after Mika's practice there, I had a little more of a breakdown. So uh, I should have anticipated that a little better. But the last two, uh, the one right lane was really good, and then the, then I moved left and tried to get around it on the left lane, and that hit flat. So I'm going to switch to a regular eruption, uh, a little cleaner cover, and uh, and I can roll a little bit more and still get it to the spot and hope that that changes the carry. Thanks, Chris. So a telling moment now for Chris Barnes. These pros no stranger to switching balls mid-game, but it can't be easy for anyone. Except for Chris Barnes. <laughs> well, equipment is key out here. Obviously, you have to have the physical tools. You have to have the talent. You also have to have good equipment. He seems to be loosening up a little bit. You saw a smile on his face, a glance over at his equipment people saying, yeah, OK, that worked. Now let's try it on the left lane. Yes. Well, Chris seems to have fixed his problems as he comes up with a double. OK, thus far, looks like a pretty good ball change. Pretty good so adjustment. Far. Stay tuned. Mika, two strikes, two spares. As you see Barnes, nice ball. You know, and he said he wanted to get us something that was a little cleaner through the front part of the lane. And when the ball's cleaner through the front, it retains energy longer, and that gets the ball to finish through the pins the correct way. Mika down by nine now. He's up to the task. <laughs> Mika Koivu Nimi now up by one after that answering strike in the fifth, both with doubles. One pin match halfway through. Couldn't ask for a better title match. Let's see what Mika does getting back up here on the left lane. <laughs> oh, he thought the eight pin was going to stand, but Mika got a break. There's the turkey. Huge break for Mika Koivuniemi and tripping that four at the right time. You're going to hear this bowling ball hit the lane, and it's actually double bounces. Drifts just a pinch high, trips the four pin. What a great break for Mika Koivu Niemi. So the match is back on Chris Barnes and Mika Koivu Niemi putting on a good show here in Las Vegas. Come on back.
Welcome back. Geico's PBA World Series of Bowling bringing you this World Bowling Tour Men's Finals. We've got a good match underway. Mika with a turkey up by 11 now. Chris Barnes on the approach. Last shot on this lane, Lawn was a little light, a little skinny. Barnes guaranteed his spot in this event by winning the Vienna Open. Go, 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 go! Uh, did not go. Wow. This is something easy to make. That ball just quit right before he got to the 1-3 pocket. And Chris has left himself a mess. Barnes cannot answer Mika. <sighs> Two, five, seven, eight. He might need a bigger ball. <laughs> this isn't easy. That needs to hook. Oh, he got help. Huge break. Wow. Barnes with a miracle spare there. And let's take a look at the fast safe pain relief replay brought to you by the makers of Bear Advanced Aspirin. Oh. Yeah, he knows he got away with one there. Oh yeah. It's like finding money in the street. Good. Bad news is he lost a lot of count by leaving six standing. He's down 15 now, and Mika's working on three in a row. Now he's going to second guess that ball the next time he's on the right lane as well. A lot of demons playing in Chris Barnes' head, but all calm here on the left lane. Barnes still thinking about that lead on the right side. Oh, he's sitting down right now looking at that lane going, what the heck? What do I do now? Bad news also for Chris Barnes is he's got to finish on the right lane. He better figure it out. He's got one more shot before the 10th on that lane. Mika, can he get the 10 to fall? He got a nudge, but no. And that's a really good break for Chris Barnes, not so much for Mika. That keeps Barnes in this. Mika could have really extended the lead. A little half ten, a little messenger decides to come over and give it a little, uh, a little spoon love, there, huh? A little love tap. <laughs> and so Mika goes turkey nine. Points it up. Barnes back in this match. But it's getting late. Right, Barnes has to be wondering what happens next to me here. First, he has to have Mika bowl his eighth frame. His family proudly looking on. And Mika makes them proud once again. No double bouncing there. Mika high flush with the shot in the eighth. Now it's all about Chris Barnes in the right lane. Check out the launch and how, how high off the floor Mika actually lets go of that bowling ball. But perfect down lane reaction and a great result. So now Chris Barnes with quite a task in front of him. Possible 244, Mika, possible 248. He got him there. I'm not sure if that was the solution he wanted, but he got all 10. Man, that lane is getting tight when we down lane. You heard him say that lane is getting tight for me. He hasn't got a ball to go high flush on that lane yet. Light, then he leaves the mess in the sixth, comes back in the eighth with another light mixer. 
See the difference between the two matches. Nine of 11 strikes in match number one to defeat Fagan. And now struggling to stay up with Mika here in match number two. Max score for Barnes, 244. Max score for Mika, 248. Biggest shot of the tournament right here for Chris Barnes. Barnes working on a double, yes. and he makes it three. Yes. Is Chris still looking ahead towards that right lane? He's micromanaging the right lane right now. Yeah. All right, Namika Koivuniemi coming off a strike here in the ninth. Chance to put a hurt on Chris Barnes. Oh, and he leaves the 10. So close. What a great shot he just threw there. And, and you can tell by the reaction, Mika knows he's in trouble now because Chris Barnes is already in the 220s. Mika's in the two teens. Mika will give him the spare here, and he strikes out in the 10th frame. He'll shoot 228. That means Chris Barnes needs to get up in the 10th frame and throw just the first strike to win. You saw the anguish on Mika's face after he left that 10. Right now, it's all about putting the pressure right back on Chris Barnes. He's got a strike out here in the 10th frame. The right lane is still suspect for Barnes, even though he struck the last two out of three shots. What a back and forth match it has been. Mika now has let Barnes back in it. Tenth frame. Two more balls to go to put maximum heat on Barnes now. Chris Barnes awaiting to see what his task will be. Mika taking a re-rack here. He's going to take as much time as possible to finish the ninth and 10th frame. Chris Barnes is going to be sitting a long time. So Chris decides, well, you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm going to walk around. Mika's not doing anything illegal. It's Come it's on. totally up to him to take a re-rack. You're allowed two a game. He's, he's going to take the second one right now. Yes. And he's going to use as much time as humanly possible. Very the interesting. The longer Chris has to sit, the tougher it is to throw that shot. They do not look like the best of friends right this very second round. Listen, these two are, are veterans, seasoned veterans, major championship winners. They both know exactly what each other is doing. No big surprise that Mika did that if you're Chris Barnes or vice versa. So now Mika Koivuniemi with a little extra drying of the right hand. Barnes, you saw, trying to stay loose, trying to stay focused. As I mentioned, he said he did identify the weakness he had under pressure situations. We'll soon find out if he has. Any poker techniques involved here? A lot of mind games. A lot of mind games involved in both. Mika is not bluffing, though, as he comes through. With the double in the 10. Huge shot there. Now he needs at least seven to force Barnes to throw the first strike in the 10th frame. I don't think seven will be a problem. Mika working on maximum 228. What has Barnes been thinking about this whole time? He needs the one shot on the left lane, or excuse me, on the right lane. What's been going through his mind? He's been sitting a long time. And Mika, the hammer. A long time in between shots. Well, a long time to second guess yourself. A long time to, am I really throwing the right ball? 
Mika. He's got to commit to something right here, right now. He needs the first strike. The anger on Mika's face as he got back to his seat, throwing his towel for opening the door. Chris Barnes now on that bugaboo right lane that has given him so much trouble. He's actually made a ball change. He's gone back to the ball he started with. It's strike an eight. What a move. The biggest ball of this match now for Chris Barnes. <laughs> and he got it! Chris Barnes set as Mika tried to ice him with stall tactics. Mika knows that this match is all but over. Chris Barnes now. Eight to win. Did the pressure get to him? Yes. No, not this time. Chris Barnes comes through, walks through the fire and wins the World Bowling Tour Men's Championship. Well, just phenomenal shots in the 10th frame, and Chris Barnes has uh, had his struggles on television. He's performed brilliantly at times on television. He said, bring it. <laughs> Today, Chris Barnes performed brilliantly. Chris Barnes with an encore. Bring on the turkey and the 10th. That's a terrible break on that round. That's a great shot. Mika Koivu, the did all he could, but it's Chris Barnes who once again gets the best of his buddy. Well done, Chris Barnes. A big moment for a big champion, but maybe even a small breakthrough moment, even at this stage of his career, Randy. He, he talked about how frustrating and disappointing last season was. Off to a great start this season. Back with more in Las Vegas in a moment. The Bear Advanced Aspirin World Bowling Tour Finals presented by the PBA is brought to you by GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Brunswick, find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. Columbia 300, Columbia bowls the world over. And by Motive Bowling, high performance equipment with a fresh perspective, get motivated. Here's Mika Koivuniemi's shot in the ninth frame. It's the biggest shot of the match for him because he could have shut Barnes out. He rings at 10 instead. Barnes makes a huge ball change in the eighth frame just for the right lane. Barnes needs the first hit. He gets it. He ends up striking out. And what a great way to finish for Chris Barnes. Kimberly Pressler is with our newest champion. Such a close match between Mika and Chris Barnes. And Chris, you came out the victor in this, but it literally came down to the 10th frame. What were you thinking heading into that when Mika opened the door? Well, I, that right lane was suffered for both of us to strike on, and I made a chain, ball change in the eighth to the master option, and I got a, was able to get a lucky strike. I, just went, I moved a little bit more right in the 10th and just tried to concentrate on the keys that I work with Mark Baker all the time so that I could perform right there. Well, Mika did yeah. not get the redemption that he was hoping for today, so we got to ask about the shirt. We thinking tie-dye, we thinking fluorescent purple. What are you thinking? Oh, I don't know. Pink, unicorns, rainbows, Swedish flags. I don't know. I think we might let my fans decide what, uh, what Mika wears the next time he's on TV. Okay, congratulations, Chris Barnes, for your title win today. Thanks, Kimberly. What an interesting match late there, Randy. Mika tried to ice his good buddy Chris Barnes, but Chris walked through the fire and took down that title in the flying colors. Well, Chris Barnes came in with a great game plan that him and his coach Mark Baker uh, developed. He stuck to it. He didn't overthink it. Mika tried to ice him, took forever to finish that 10th frame. And, you know, we've, we've seen Chris in the past kind of have some demons creep in there, and there was sure plenty of time for that to happen. Chris stuck to his game plan brilliantly and then performed brilliantly in the 10th. Yes! 
terrific men's final. Now we have the women's matches coming up. We're going to open up with Liz Johnson and Kelly Kulik. That should be just as exciting. Well, I think there's going to be some big scores on the, the, the women's side as well for a couple of reasons. One, the shorter pattern I think really favors Liz Johnson and Missy Parkin. However, I think Kelly's going to struggle a little bit on it. She's admitted to not particularly liking the shorter patterns. But Kelly's so good, you can never count her out. She'll figure out a way to get there. That match coming up momentarily. Uh, we did mention at the beginning of the show the special patches being worn by the players as a show of solidarity uh, as the sport suffered a tremendous loss this past September. Former PBA champion Tony Reyes died as a result of injuries sustained in a traffic accident. During his 14-year career, Tony won eight regional titles and one PBA Tour title, the 2006 Motor City Classic. Tony's crowning achievement in the sport came in the semifinals of that event. He threw the 18th televised 300 game in the sports history, propelling him to his one and only tour title. Well, Tony Reyes was my friend, and he was friends with a lot of people out here. And Tony had more best friends than anybody I've ever known. I bowled together with Tony. We played golf together. We broke bread together, and I miss him, and a lot of people miss him. But no one will ever forget Tony's trademark laugh or his million dollar smile. <laughs> Reyes survived by his wife Nicole and daughter Gianna. For more information about Tony Reyes and the PBA's tribute to him, log on to PBA.com. Welcome back to South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa in Las Vegas, Nevada. The men's finals in the book. We're ready to get the women's finals underway. It's going to open up with Kelly Kulik taking on Liz Johnson. But first, let's get it over to Kimberly, who's with a special guest, the president of the World 10 Pin Bowling Association. Kevin, what does the WTBA do for the sport of bowling? The World 10 Pin Bowling Association is the internationally recognized governing body for our sport by the International Olympic Committee. We have world championships, we're responsible for them, and we also uh, manage the World Bowling Tour. And what does the season look like for the World Bowling Tour this year? Well, I'm happy to say that we've expanded the World Bowling Tour. We've added events in Qatar, in Indonesia. We've added our world championships, which is in Las Vegas next year. In conjunction with our great partners, the PBA, I think that uh, the, the, the future is unlimited. It looks great to us, thank you. Thank you. All right, for player introductions, let's bring in once again, Mike J. The number three qualifier is an eight-time member of Team USA from Cheektowaga, New York, Liz Johnson. The number two player is an eight-time member of Team USA, first women to win a PBA Tour title at the 2010 PBA Tournament of Champions from Union, New Jersey, Kelly Kulik. The top qualifier owns two PBA regional titles, three-time Team USA member from Lake Forest, California, Missy Parkin. Well, as if the competition isn't making her day tough enough, Liz Johnson has a fresh injury to deal with, a broken left toe. I always have like 10, 20 bowling balls in my car. And this, this one time I have one bowling ball in my car and it was in a, in a little box and the box was broken, of course. And uh, I just, I opened the car door, um, uh, the passenger, the driver's side is behind my door and uh, the ball fell out so fast and just fell right on my toe. And in, in 30 years of bowling, I've never had a ball fall, fall on, on my foot or, come that close and uh, that was the one time and of course I had to drive in another 30 minutes after that and it was just in pain and I had to go bowl a tournament that night and the next morning. So I did that and then uh, finally got it x-rayed a couple days later and it was broken but you know you just take it a day at a time and uh, you know just try to be tough about it. 
Liz Johnson with a broken toe, Randy. I talked to her right before the start of this match. I said, Liz, how's that toe feeling? She says, you know, it's okay. There's probably a little adrenaline going on right now. So Liz Johnson opening up the Bear World Bowling Tour Finals. The women in action. First ball thrown. She's got a nine count. Liz Johnson, 38 years old, from Cheektowaga, New York. First woman ever to make televised finals of a PBA event. She actually beat Wes Malott, only to lose to Tommy Jones. Oh, she cleans up the seven pin, open with a spare here. Tough early in a match, in a match this big. A little nerves going through the body, I imagine. Always. You know, yep. The first couple of shots, you're just trying to keep from uh, throwing up on your shoes, and, <laughs> and you got to remember to breathe. And you, you just got to kind of work your way through the nerves early on. Kelly Kulik now, 35 years old from Union, New Jersey. And she gets them all to open up. So two bowling pioneers here, as we mentioned. Kulik, the first woman to earn a PBA Tour exemption. She won the 2010 PBA Tournament of Champions. Johnson, the first woman to make TV finals of a PBA Tour event and win a PBA Regional Tour event. And so this is a match of history makers. Kulik now on the left lane. Brooklyn doesn't come through for it. I didn't think Kelly would like this shorter pattern. And you can see what happens on the miss. It's going to go dead left. The short pattern, her style to me, just doesn't match up well. However, I do, I do think that it matches up very well for Liz Johnson and Missy Parkin. So Kulik now trying to clean up. I was expecting that. And the reason why I say that, Lon, is Liz goes much straighter, much more ball speed. The same with Missy Parkin. Kelly Kulik has got a lot more hand, slower ball speed. She's got to open this pattern up a lot more than the other two players. And I think it's just better the straighter you go on this shorter oil pattern, the closer you can stay to the outside part of the lane, the better. Johnson now, 11 titles on the PWBA. And she comes back with a strike in the second frame. That's what Liz Johnson is working with today. If, she you, throw the, if you throw the IQ, if it makes you smarter. <laughs> And doubles after opening with a spare. She's gone strike, strike. And there you can see the ideal ball reaction for this shorter pattern and the style of Liz Johnson. It's much more straight, straighter trajectory through the front part of the lane, more ball speed, less rev rate, and therefore she's able to hold that ball into the pocket real consistently. You look now working on a spare. <laughs> Another strike. She likes that lane. Well, as we mentioned, Kelly Kulik is not only a groundbreaking pioneer in bowling, but in all of sports as well. Her victory in the 2010 Tournament of Champions put her in pretty elite company, joining the likes of Billie Jean King and Danica Patrick as one of the few women in professional sports who have beaten men on a level playing field. Here at the 2010 Tournament of Champions, Kelly defeated Chris Barnes in the finale to be crowned the first woman ever to win a PBA title and a major championship to boot. It would be the victory of a lifetime for many, but Kelly is not satisfied. She wants to do it again. I watch a lot of the men who've had success over the last three to five years, Fagan, O'Neill, Sean Rash, Belmonte. They've kind of exploded and they've stayed there. I've had 
great championship wins at the top, but I've also fallen again because I am bowling against the men. And I'm frustrated. I'm confused. I need a little bit more help than what I've been getting. Um, I, I want to be maybe not winning you know, a PBA title again, but I want to be a contender for a title. I want that opportunity to be on the show and showcase my skills and talents. I want to be, I know what it felt like. I can feel the blood rushing through my veins now as I talk about the wins that I've had, and I want that again. Kelly's a five-time major champion winner. Liz Johnson has won 11 titles on the PWBA Tour, including a 1996 Women's US Open. So both of them with major credentials. Kelly Kulik says she found her passion as a fifth grader. She knew she wanted to be a pro bowler. On that left lane. Oh. Says hook, it did, but still leads to seven pin. She looks like That's she a has a, shot. a little more early hook on that left lane, and that was evident in the first shot she threw when it went Brooklyn. That ball there, she gets it through the front part of the lane into the right zone but it just lost a little energy when it got back to the pocket. So Kulik still trying to solve that left lane. Another nine spare for Kulik. So Liz Johnson now. Any signs of a problem that you've noticed early on with that broken foot from Liz Johnson, Randy? Not yet. Broken toe, big toe, left sliding foot's gonna take a lot of pressure, but uh, she's hit the pocket first three shots. And she hits it again. Straighter is greater on a shorter pattern. Very similar to Cheetah, except it's much flatter in terms of the oil ratio across the lane. So Johnson with that turkey at two, three, and four with a 20 pin advantage right now, beginning of the fifth. And Johnson does it again with the four bagger. Big advantage for her on this oil pattern with her ball speed. This is in Liz Johnson's wheelhouse. Johnson, the two-time Women's U.S. Open champion, now hands it over to the three-time U.S. Women's Open champion, Kelly Kulik. Kulik has gone strike spare, strike spare so far. Strikes coming on this right lane, and there she does it again. I like this one. <laughs> I like the right lane a lot. Let's see if we can get the left. And figure it out quick. She's uh, 30 pins down right now, halfway through this match, and she needs to start throwing strikes together. So now on that troublesome left lane, Kelly Kulik. Only troublesome for her. Kulik with the strike. Now just 20 pins down to Liz Johnson here at the World Bowling Tour Women's Finals. Come on back to Las Vegas after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. Lon McCarron with Randy Peterson. The World Bowling Tour Finals. The women's preliminary match on the lane right now. Kelly Kulik and Liz Johnson. Johnson with an early 20 pin advantage on Kulik. Winner of this match will roll a championship match against Missy Parkin. Johnson now working with a broken foot. 
and working on a four bagger. Oh. And there it is, five in a row for Johnson, who broke that toe just a week ago. And she really is working it very well, Randy. Watch the eyes. She looks very short on the approach. The theory behind that is the closer your target is to you, the easier it is to hit. Also, the farther down the lane you look, tends to create a little bit more ball speed. Liz doesn't have that issue. She wants to get the ball off her hand real quick and get it on, onto the floor and rolling as soon as possible. Watch the eyes again. Johnson looking for six in a row. Doesn't get it there on that left lane. She leaves two behind. Doesn't look like she's having any issues with that toe. She's hitting the foul line pretty solid. But this ball just didn't have enough to get back up to the pocket, leaving the 2-4 pretty easy spare. Johnson. Clean up on the left side, and she does indeed with the spare. So a little bit of a door opening for Kelly Kulik. wonder how many ibuprofen Liz Johnson took this morning. A little adrenaline, some ibuprofen. She's not feeling a thing. Broken toe, what? <laughs> now Kulik. She likes this lane. She still likes this lane. Hang in there. Kelly Kulik is in full uniform for this match, but not too long ago it was quite a different story when she posed nude for ESPN the magazine. ESPN Body Issue magazine came to me basically from having success winning the TSC in 2010. Somebody took notice and they asked me, you know, would I post nude in the magazine? Done very gracefully, very athletically. Um, and I said, you know, how often am I going to have the opportunity to post nude? Hugh Hefner's not going to call up and ask me anytime soon. So it took about all three and a half, four hours just posing in a bikini with the bowling ball itself, try, trying to find the right angle, right poses. And then from there, I would just ungown and, and undress and, and get back in that position. The only thing I wish I drilled like a 10 pound bowling ball to hold instead of an actual 15 pound bowling ball because the next four days, my legs were killing me. You look now, working on a turkey here in this left lane. And there's the four bagger as Kulik begins to storm back. And all of a sudden, Kelly Kulik's cut the deficit to eight pins. She's figured out the left lane. She's locked in on the right lane. And all of a sudden, we have a match. Two major championship winners going at it head to head. Doesn't get any better than this. Johnson with five in a row earlier. Kulik now working on four in a row. There's Liz Johnson once again in that right lane, and she comes back after that spare to get them all. Take a look to see what she does on this left lane after going light. As you can see the score, eight pins. Liz Johnson can strike out to shoot 268. Kelly Kulik can strike out to shoot 260. Big strike coming up here. The right lane looks the, like the better of the two lanes. Liz Johnson gets to finish on the right lane. Johnson trying to put more space between herself and Kulik, and she does just that. Now, we call that shot there Mungus, as in humongous, humongous. <laughs> because that sets up the 10th frame for her. So no matter what Kelly Kulik does, Liz Johnson can't be shut out. And she knows just how big that was, Randy. It's all in her hands now. Kulik working on four strikes in a row in her favorite right lane, and there is five. Way to get the hill. So Way keeping the, hill. the heat on Johnson. So right now the objective is to make Liz Johnson perform in the 10th frame, and the only way that Kelly Kula can do that is by striking out here in the 10th frame. Liz Johnson's in the 240s, Kelly Kulik's in the 230s. This next strike pretty much get Kelly Kulik in the lead. 
two women who know how to handle pressure of the big stage. Kulik needs to come through here. This one lane time, has one been time. tough for her. Yeah. She got him when come she on. needed it most. And she just took the lead. That face of determination on Kelly Kulik. What a great shot. Two of the greatest women professional bowlers in the history of the sport. We got, us, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned fist fight going on right here. No matter what Kelly Kulik does, though, remember, she can't shut out Liz Johnson. Trying to put maximum pressure on her opponent. Liz Johnson now in this left lane. And she said she had salt. What the hell? Yeah! And it appears she has. Come on, make it work, make it work. One more to go for Kelly Kulik. That's a great shot. Now she just forced Liz Johnson to throw a double in the 10th frame. One of the benefits of doing that magazine shoot, she said, was to get into extra better shape. And she's continued that regimen to now. So perhaps in the best shape of her career, Kelly Kulik to put maximum hurt on Liz Johnson. And she does just Come that. And now that. it's up to Liz Johnson. What a great comeback. She figured out the enigma of the left lane for her. Came back and threw the last two, four, six. Eight strikes in a row to shoot 260. Now Liz Johnson needs a double and three to advance to the title match against Missy Parkin. Big moment for Johnson. Down 12. Yeah. She Come is on. doing the job she came to do. Well, no big surprise there. She just stepped up and went high flush with the first shot in the 10th frame. It's got to have the next one. Has to have this next shot. Kulik. Sits helplessly nearby. She has done all she could. You shoot 260 on television, usually good enough to win, and I'd take that score anytime. However, this time it may not be enough. Liz Johnson has to strike on this ball. By and large, for the match right here. Yeah. And Johnson right comes here, through Come in the tightest of moments. <laughs> That's good stuff. Boy, if you're a bowling Goodness. fan, you, you got to love a match like this. It came down to the 10th frame. Kelly Kulik did everything she could to put the pressure on Liz Johnson. And Liz Johnson steps up like a true champion. Throws two big strikes here in the 10th frame now. Stay behind the foul line, get three pins, and move on to the title match. Liz Johnson now just needs three on this ball to secure this match and a spot in the finals. As she get the 10 now, she'll take nine. Great ball, Kelly. Great ball. Good luck. Kulik took all the pressure and put it on Liz Johnson, and Liz Johnson handled it just well. 267 to 260 over Kelly Kulik. Johnson moves into the finals. She will take on Missy Parkin. Missy Parkin keeping warm on one of the sideline lanes here, getting ready to bowl for this championship. The Bear World Bowling Tour Finals will have the women's championship match right after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, the WTBA Bear Advance After World Bowling Tour Finals. We are down to our women's finals. Liz Johnson playing her way into this championship match against Missy Parkin. 
Missy was the winner of the 2011 USBC Queens, one of the major championships in women's bowling. The victory was especially sweet for Parkin, who had a legitimate chance to win the Queens the year before, only to be derailed by a 7-10 split in her semifinal match. No splits here, though, as Parkin won the first major of her career, 214-189 over number one seed Alicia Curran. Southern California. Breakthrough win at the USBC Queens 2011. Parkin's first ball of the championship match. She leaves the 10 pen. She also has a couple of regional titles to her credit. And she was actually the first woman to join the PBA when the PBA opened it up to, uh, to women professionals. Parkin secured her top seed here with a strong runner up finish at the Australian Masters. She has watched Liz Johnson bowl superbly in the opening match in her victory against Kelly Kulik. Look out. Oh, and she just barely got that spare. That ball took a hard left turn. As a good friend of mine once said, this is skinny jeans right here, just barely catching a piece of the 10 pin. But no harm, no foul. That extra layer of lacquer <laughs> on that 10 pin <laughs> gave her that spare. And now Liz Johnson coming off. 267, 260 win in the semifinals. Opening on the right lane. A little high, and that's trouble. Whoa. Right lane is broken down. She didn't get any practice after her last match and did not see this coming at all. She'll make a move on that left, or excuse me, on that right lane in the third frame. Trying to get as spin as she can. It'll be an open frame to open up. So you see Parkin, the top points getter on the WPT list. Carolyn Doran Ballard finished fourth. She was the defending champion. The Honey Badger. Now it'll be Parkin or Johnson as the new champion. And Already with a road uphill to climb for Liz Johnson after an open frame in the first. And now she comes through with the strike on the left side. Not to make excuses for her, but we did mention the broken toe that Liz Johnson suffered on her left foot, the big toe, the sliding foot, just one week ago. And she felt fine in the opening match, so. We call that, that the Sergeant Hulka. The big toe? The big toe, right. Yeah, that's the, the Hulka, Sergeant Hulka. Now Missy Parkin working on a spare. Come on. Yes. Nice she shot. cleans him up nicely. Well, you know, this WPT has allowed Missy Parkin to travel the globe, something she makes sure she takes full advantage of. I think um, bowling-wise, it's not that different except in some of the Asian countries, they have a little bit different customs, um, so you have to be aware of that. However, um, bowling-wise, it's just, it's, it's all the same, really. You're just competing against yourself in the lanes. Um, but I like the opportunity to get out and travel. I think that's a lot of fun. And I've made a point to, at all these international tournaments, to at least go one day and go sightseeing. Like, I got to ride an elephant in Thailand and, you know, do some crazy stuff, go out in Sydney, and it was fun. One of the beauties of the game is being able to get the stamps and the passport as often as possible. Parkin up early here against Liz Johnson. Get up. Yeah, that one was not moving the way she wanted to. A couple of nice breaks early on for Missy. She barely converts the 10 pin in the first frame. And here she actually trips out the 2-8, only leaving the 10 pin. Watch this. See that great style, great balance and form there at the foul line, but this ball did not get up. Watch it skidding down the lane. and. 2-8 goes late, only leaving the 10. Missy Parkin loves the beach, loves bodyboarding. This yeah. is in Southern California. Yeah, but she's afraid of spiders. She likes bowling against the men. <laughs> like, she really likes beating guys, right? But Everyone afraid, hates spiders. But she's afraid of spiders. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you wouldn't think she'd be afraid of anything. Spiders, I'm afraid of spiders. 
Really? I'm sorry to bring that on you so early in my career with you, but yeah. You, you probably, sh you probably <laughs> shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> All right, now Liz Johnson, after that superb opening match against Kelly Kulik, trying to work her way back into this one, and it's only the third frame championship match. Oh. Yeah, she is having trouble right now <laughs> deciphering the lanes. Well, just the right lane. She went yeah, high she in the first the strike frame. The left, yep. She went high in the first frame. She made an adjustment there. That ball went high. So now there's uh, there's some in internal gears starting to turn, trying to figure out the right lane, especially after coming off of a 267 game. 2001 Players Champion. Oh. Look out. Oh, she didn't like that. Oh, she got them all. She didn't like the release. Well, normally you convert the 3 6 10 for a right hander by covering the 3 and the 6 with the bowling ball. And then the ball just kind of deflects off into the 10 pin. But this time she pulls it and gets a nice break, catching the left side of the 3 pin and kind of dominoing the rest of the pins into the right gutter. Johnson having to feel fortunate, picking up that spare now on the left side where she struck before. And there oh. she has the same problem on this side, oh. leaving a split. So the hold that she had oh, the first funny. game is gone. Every time she gets the ball just a hair left of target or, good, or, or when she gets it going too straight up the lane, it hooks high like that shot did right there. An unhappy Liz Johnson in danger here of opening for a second time. Has to be content with this one pin and another open frame in the fourth. She's going to have to make some kind of big time adjustment, whether it's a ball change. But the shot that she had in the first match against Kelly Kulik is gone. Now Missy Parkin trying to keep the heat on. She's working on a spare. Harkin with the strike in the fourth. See her, she's using an omen, which is the strongest ball in the arsenal that she brought to this championship pair. Remember, she was the higher seed, so she got the choice of who started the match. Obviously, she likes the right lane better, so she chose to start the match, which allows her to finish on the right lane. There's something new that we haven't seen is the glasses. Lon, you remember the story that she was telling us the other day about the glasses? Something about the glare and the lights? Yeah. And Parkin with a nine ball in the fifth. She just started wearing them, and she wore them in Australia when she finished second. Just kind of helps her see the boards a little more clearly on the lane. And it is something new for her, too. So she mentioned it's a danger of distraction for her, having to have those two focal lengths. They look good on her. Missy Parkin may not need the advantage of closing on the right lane, because she is running away with this match early against Liz Johnson, who's finding trouble. She likes that, walks away with another spare. And Missy's family, of course, here, lane side. Drew, always nearby, great supporter of Missy Parkin. Here's the ball change. Here is the adjustment. Let's see if it works for Liz Johnson. And she got it? Yes, she does. She got a little help there. Well, Liz Johnson is a down and in player that looks for hold area. This ball is a little left of target, and it does exactly what she wants it to do. It lays there. The ball she was using started to break loose down the lane. She gets a nice break there, tripping the nine late. The slightest nudge. And the nine down gave her the strike. Now trying to double here, trying to put up maximum number. She can cut the deficit to 14 with a hit here. 
Johnson with the new ball, and she has it working. So Liz Johnson changing balls midstream, and it seems to be working. Missy Parkin with a 14-pin advantage halfway through this women's championship match of the World Bowling Tour Finals. Who's going to take it, Parkin or Johnson? The action continues when we come back. Back to South Point, the WBT Finals. The final two women on the lane. Missy Parkin with a 14-point advantage right now on Liz Johnson. Johnson has just doubled to close the gap. Parkin now working on the right lane where she has struck twice before. She got them all once again on that right side, and she answers back. And you can see there's no secret as to why she wanted to finish on the right lane. She's perfect on that lane. On the left lane, it's been all 10 pins. A couple of soft tens, and then she tripped the 2-8 late in the third frame to leave a 10 pin. Let's see if she can get that bowling ball to face up a little stronger into the pocket and carry all 10. Parkin trying to keep the heat on Johnson, who has two open frames already. Come on, Perry, yes. Come on, she says, and yes, indeed. And Missy's family loves it, her parents and husband. Boy, and that's a great way to answer the double that Liz Johnson just threw at her. Missy steps up and throws two great shots and comes right back at Liz Johnson and said, hey, you know what, game on. Johnson now working with this ball that has brought her a double so far. And she doesn't make it That's big. a turkey. Yeah. Excuse me, Lon, that was big. She needed that hit. It's getting late in the game. She's down by 25. She really needed to carry the Swisher 7. Johnson cleaning up the spare there in the seventh, but things are looking dire for her right now, down 25. Yep. Coming up next Sunday, the Geico World Series of Bowling continues with the Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Cheetah Championship and one-time U.S. Open winner Bill O'Neill climbed the stepladder to capture his first title in nearly two years. He'll have to get past Chris Loeschetter, Jeff Roche, and number one seed Mike Wolf to make it happen. The Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Cheetah Championship next Sunday at 1 Eastern. So here's Liz Johnson in the eighth. As we said, 25 pins down, and she really needs a strike here to have any kind of chance. Liz Johnson sees the writing on the wall. Yep, she went to the ball change, looked good early, threw that double, and then went swisher seven, soft ten. And I'm afraid it's all but <sighs> over for Liz Johnson. She's at a 184 pace right now. Missy Parkins in the 200s. She's going to need some help. So I, after I, the double, she spares twice, and you're right. Yeah, and I just don't think Missy's going to give it to her. So Missy's dialed in on this right lane. A strike here will increase her lead to 36. Missy performing well here on these lanes at South Point in front of this great crowd. Her dad, Frank Belinder, PBA member. See him off in the background. She loves that right lane. Well, that's huge. She, she's now in the two teens, and all she has to do is stay clean, ninth and tenth frame. 
to capture this title. Liz Johnson's max score is 204. Strike here and it's pretty much over. Missy Parkin can close the door virtually on Liz Johnson and uh, she has done nothing to tell us she can't do it right here. She's been very solid throughout. A 36 pin advantage. She's bowled under the lights many times before. A breakthrough win at the 2011 USBC Queens, her biggest win. And that has helped her earn the top seed here and perform at her highest on these lanes. Another strike, a four bagger for Missy Parkin. All she has to do now is keep it on the lane. tell she is relieved every pro, pro bowler puts pressure on themselves to bring their best game and Missy has done that at the biggest moment Liz Johnson gets the strike on the right side too little too late though well Liz great first game shooting 267 against Kelly Kulik and then just totally lost her ball reaction paid the ultimate price in the first and fourth frame going through the nose and splitting both times she makes the change, catches a double, then goes swisher seven, soft 10. Strike in the ninth if she strikes out 204, but it won't be near enough. Liz Johnson with another strike. Maybe a little more relaxed now. Now that it's over. What a performance she had in the opening match, as you mentioned, against Kelly Kulik, and now Liz Johnson, who opened up in the first, opened up in the third, and then she knew it was an uphill grind the rest of the way, and Missy Parkin really never let her in. And that's not a great way to close for Liz Johnson. And I'll tell you what, it's an awful feeling, too. You're dialed in, and then all of a sudden it goes away, and you only have a couple of frames to figure it out, and you better figure it out quick. Then you have to throw great shots, and you have to carry. So Liz Johnson's final ball here in this championship match against Missy Parkin. And Johnson closes with a 190. You see the trophy right there in the foreground that will soon be in the grasp of Missy Parkin. She said coming in, she loves the shorter patterns. And well, you had to you had to kind of feel that that she'd have a nice look on this. Good little mix there of the pins, and that will do it. Missy Parkin winning the WTBA Bear Aspen World Bowling Tour Finals here in Las Vegas. The Bear Advanced Aspirin World Bowling Tour Finals presented by the PBA is brought to you by Bear Advanced Aspirin. See how it can work for you at fastreliefchallenge.com. The USBC, enhancing the bowling experience for millions of bowlers. To learn more, visit us on bowl.com. Storm, bowlers serving bowlers. Storm is the bowlers company. And by track, evolutionary, revolutionary. All right, welcome back to South Point, and our champion has been crowned, and Kimberly Pressler is with her right now. So, Missy, Liz made a ball change, and she threw a double. What was going through your mind at that point? Uh, I knew that I needed to start striking. I was having some trouble carrying on the left lane, so um, at the break, I did uh, discuss with my ball reps, and we collectively made a decision, and it worked, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> it absolutely worked, and today of all days, your birthday, what does this mean to you winning on your birthday? Uh, well, it's definitely the best birthday present anyone could ever ask for. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, congratulations to Missy Parkin. She wins a title again today. Plenty of adjustments for Missy to the glasses, down to the ball, down to position. Now time for the Geico Championship recap. Randy. 
Mika Koibuniemi trying to put the pressure on Chris Barnes. Leaves a massive ringing 10. Now Chris Barnes needs the first hit in the 10th frame yeah. to win. He gets it done. He wins 244 to 228. That's a terrible break. Then our women's finals. It was Missy Parkin taking on Liz Johnson. Liz Johnson coming off a 267 shellacking over Kelly Kulik. But it was all Parkin. She finishes with the last five out of six to win 238 to 190. Bill O'Neill is back in a TV final next week. The former US Open champ will try to claim the Cheetah Championship from the World Series of Bowling as the fourth seed next Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. What a great kickoff to our brand new season of bowling. Congratulations to Chris Barnes and Missy Parkin, our 2012 WBT champions. For Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, I'm Lon McCarran. We'll see you back here in Las Vegas next week for more of the GEICO World Series of Bowling.